Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Hercules when I filmed uh, the episode with Kevin Sorbo. Uh, the company contacted me and they said, hey, we'd like you to go to New Zealand and film Hercules. Well, I wasn't familiar with the TV show, but I was like, to New Zealand? Absolutely. So I remember I was really excited and I went to my gym and I was working out and I said, oh, I'm going to film an episode of Hercules. And my friend's like, well, say hi to Kevin for me. I said, Kevin who? She said, Kevin Sorbo. I said, who's Kevin Sorbo? She goes, he plays the lead. I said, oh, geez, I guess I better watch an episode. So I went home, watched an episode, and I absolutely loved it. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. This is going to be so different from anything I've ever shot. I am going to have a wig on and I'm going to have long, luxurious, curly hair. And I'm going to have a really sexy, one of those like Renaissance costumes on. I'm like, this is going to be so amazing. And I've never been to New Zealand. So the first thing I do is look up things to do in New Zealand. Well, I will get to that in a minute. But first, I go off to New Zealand. And they pick me up and we have a read through at the table and I meet Kevin Sorbo. And I was like, okay, now I know why my friend wanted to say hi. He was uh, very good looking, uh, very funny, and uh, just a great uh, actor to work with. I have to say out of all the people I've ever worked with, Kevin is one of my favorites. A lot of times, like when you're fighting someone, the guy has an ego or he doesn't want to look like he's getting beat up by a woman. But Kevin was so great. Kevin is like, Yes, the more you could do to me, the better. I love it. I love it. And the more bizarre things we thought of, the more he loved it. And I was like, wow, I'm not used to this. This is so amazing that I could be my best. And Kevin wanted me to shine. So next we go in for costuming. And they bring this little tiny hair piece out. And it was red. And I was like, what is that? And they're like, that's your wig. And I'm like, well, I don't know if all my hair is even going to fit into that. So anyway, I'm thinking, what happened? All the women have these long, curly, beautiful wigs on, and I got this little red one, and then they bring out the red contacts. And I said, what's that? And they're like, you have to put those in your eyes. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't even wear contacts because my eyes are so sensitive. And these are those big ones, you know, that kind of look like cat eyed. I was like, going, oh, my God. Then they bring me my costume, and I feel it. And it's like about like 12 pounds. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so heavy. And they're like, yeah, because you're supposed to be made of fire. Now, remember, I had no idea what I was going to do in this. I was just getting over there and I was going to film the episode. So I got the script there. I got the costume there. And I was like, OK. So then we have a little dress rehearsal. We put it on and I'm like, I look in the mirror and I go, oh, my God. And I didn't know whether to cry or not, because remember, I'm thinking glamour, beauty. And here I have the red contacts in. I can't even, oh, my eyes are so sore. I have this little tiny red wig on, and I have this heavy costume that was metal, but it was painted silver, and the silver was getting all over me. And I was like, we can't make this lighter. And then the silver was cutting me because it was metal that I had on. And they're like, well, you're made of fire. You have to have a metal thing on or else your clothes would burn up. So I'm like, oh, gosh. So first day of shooting, we go on set and the wig is on maybe for about like 12 hours and probably about 10 hours. I started feeling like my head was hurting and I was like, oh, my head's hurting. And then it started feeling like it was like a Chinese torture, like someone was zapping you with electricity. And finally, at 12 hours, I took it off and I was like, oh my God, it was the wig. And I had a big line here where the wig was. The next day I wake up, my whole forehead was bruised from the wig. I said, oh, I can't, I can't do this again. I said, it, it's killing me. My head is killing me. It's all bruised from that wig. So they said, all right, well, we'll take the tight net that holds your hair in and we'll just kind of stuff your hair in there. So anyway, if you haven't seen Hercules, you have to check it out and you'll know that that was agony in that costume with that tight wig on, the big red contacts and the big heavy metal uh, costume I had to fight. The very cool thing is uh, I got to fight with uh, an old friend of mine, Karen Shepard. We had a really good fight in that. She was made of water, I was made of fire. And there was a lot of CGI in this. So I remember one scene where I shout and then fire comes out of my mouth. And 
when I did, they had a blow torch on the side of me blowing the torch and the camera was here. So I could feel that flame, that hot flame coming out. And it wasn't CGI, it was a torch and my mouth was open and it looked like it came out of me. The other scene that I really liked is they split me in half. So I had to go one side and then I had to go to the other side and then fire was coming up. Then I had to have a very strange voice. Okay, the director said, okay, we're gonna CGI the voice. So it's like, um, because I my character was sent from Hera to kill Hercules. And um, I don't remember, I think I ended up killing Karen Shepard in that. Uh, I, I think so, I was the bad person in that. Um, or I don't know, she, some, something like that. But anyway, I now am after Hercules. Right, we have the big fight scene. And Kevin was so good. Uh, he isn't really a martial artist, but he was pretty tough. He was strong. Uh, he liked to take the hits. He's like, oh, yeah, that was great. Ouch, that hurt. And then he'd laugh and go, okay, that's all right. I could deal with that. Uh, so it, it was just, it was so much fun. Now, when I was shooting that, I had two days off. And remember, I'm in New Zealand, and I'm like, this seems like it's the capital of adventure. So I found the black water rafting to do. And when I was in the cab on the way to my hotel, I said to the cab driver, this is what's on my mind. What can I do here that's adventurous? He says, you have to try black water rafting. So I'm thinking, oh, black water rafting. Uh, you just get in a raft and you're going in a tunnel. Well, when I got there, it was raining so hard that the waters were three times the level that they have. And usually, uh, and then my producer said, don't do anything dangerous on your two days off. And I'm like, okay. So I go do that. It's raining. We have to walk two miles with an inner tube to get to the cave. Now to get to the cave, you had to jump off a 20-foot bridge in your tube, go against the rushing water, and get to the other side. If you could not do this, you could not do this adventure because this adventure was eight hours long in the water, and you have a wetsuit on. So I did that. I was a little nervous, but we get in, and now the waters are so rushing and they're so fast, they normally have two guides, one in front, one in back. They have three guides, one in front, one in back, and one on the sides because they said the water is so fast, if you veer off the cave, this is a natural cave, if you veer off to it, you're gone. We won't be able to find you. So now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is dangerous. I remember the first one was jagged edges. We had helmets on, kind of like I just came back from New Zealand. I went back again. And I did a smaller version of this because I was on a tour, but this is the most dangerous one. We were coming through jagged points that were like this far from our face. And then the drop-offs were so rushing and fast. I mean, it was, it was insane. One of the guys that was in our group, we had six people in the group got hypothermia. So they had to give them some special medication, give them a shot because we were in this cold water for about eight hours. So that was that. The second day, I'm going to do white water rafting for the first time. Okay, I'm listening. I'm not going to do anything dangerous. So they tell us, you know, you're going to go over this falls. 50% uh, of the time you tip over, you don't. I've never done white water rafting before. You're on the highest rapid you could go on. And I was like going, oh, that doesn't sound good. Why couldn't I just do white water rafting on a level three? Now I'm on like a five, six. So we go to get in, and there's another woman doing it, and she falls in the water just trying to get into the raft. And I'm like, oh, geez. And they had a hard time getting her in because the water is still pretty rough. So we go over. We did not tip. Thank God we did not tip. I was so nervous about that. But since I never white water raft before, you know, everybody has their job to do. Well, since I never did it, they said, just sit down and hold on tight. So he goes, okay, sit down. So I sit down, hold on tight. We smacked against the rock. I have my hand on the outside and I hit my hand on the rock. I don't feel anything because it's numb from being ice and being in the ice water. So then, and this was winter. So this was not summer, nice and, nice and warm. It was very cold. The next day I get up to go shoot. My hand is like a swollen balloon. When I smacked it against, I thought I broke my hand and I thought, oh my God, I, I got to hide this. I can't even tell the producers because they will kill me. So anyway, that was my off adventures on that there. The ending of it, we were, I was supposed to come back and do a sequel to uh, this. I think it's called Not Fade Away. And the reason it's Not Fade Away, because Kevin and I have this fight and he gets the best of me. But when he, you think he kills me, a little smoke goes up to the sky. And that's me, not dead, going to come back. 
and uh, try to get Kevin again. Unfortunately, during that time, right after that, Kevin got really sick. He had uh, like an aneurysm in his arm. He got really weak. Uh, that's why the series ended, because he couldn't continue anymore. So thus, I never got to come back and, and reprise that character, the Enforcer. That's what I was called. So anyway, little information about uh, Hercules, uh, probably one of the most fun things, because it was just, uh, it wasn't a uh, real life. It was like kind of fantasy that I had to do it. So thanks for watching my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, uh, remember we're doing the Q&A series. Just ask away. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about it. And we'll see you soon. Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And if you like the videos, please put a like on it and refer it to your friends.